Hi right, guys. Good Lord. <coughs> Welcome to the monsoon of 2023 here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Where we are floating down the river. I don't know how many inches of rain it has rained today, but uh, we are not complaining here. It is a glorious Monday. <coughs> it is Monday, July 24th, 2023. It is 56 degrees. 56 degrees in the Finger Lakes of New York. Uh, <laughs> As the summer of 2023 slogs on. So anyway, we've got some fellow doomers hanging out at Bugs in a Jar. So I'm just going to sneak off and do a quick little rant. I want to thank uh, Brother Aaron for sending me this one right out of Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine, you know, those, those doomers over at Forbes. I love this. They... <laughs> this woman is an evolutionary and behavioral ecologist, an ornithologist, and a science writer. She is a senior contributor to Forbes magazine, and her name is Girl Scientist. G-R-R-L, girl. Girl Scientist. This is what is on the mind of this Doomer chick, girl scientist. It's the only name she has here. <clears throat> Take it away, girl scientist. And this is our, sort of our faster than and worse than previously expected. Good Lord, here we go, here we go again. <clears throat> Modern sixth mass extinction event will be worse than first predicted. Wow, imagine that. The report argues that nearly half of the planet's animal species are now in decline, but unlike past mass extinctions, this one has been entirely caused by, come on, humans. Thank you, uh... Thank you, Forbes magazine. Uh, they have all sorts of nasty looking charts in here. All right, take it away, girl scientist. <clears throat> Tragically, the global mass extinction event that we find ourselves in the midst of, not the one that will be beginning, the one that we're in the middle of today, will be even worse than originally predicted according to a recent study and then they if you want to read the you know the real science behind this they have the link to the study that this is girl scientists putting it in the English for us the international team of scientists came to their conclusion after analyzing population trends data for more than 71,000 animal species including mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects from around the world to see how their numbers have changed since record-keeping first began. So generally, scientists agree that an extinction event is occurring when species vanish much faster than they are replaced. All right, a mass extinction I never knew the actual definition of a mass extinction. A mass extinction event is usually defined as losing 75% of the world's species in a short period of geological time. So what do you think a short period of geological time is forecast? How about less than 2.8 million years. That's the Natural History Museum's definition. So you get a mass extinction event when 75% of the world's species disappear in less than 2.8 million years. 
I think it's safe to say we are in a mass extinction event. Previous research has established that the current rates of extinction between 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than background extinction rates, which, which has led some scientists to argue that life on Earth has entered its sixth mass extinction event, but uniquely when compared to the planet's previous five mass extinction events, this is the first mass extinction event that is the result of the actions of just one species. And we all take a wild guess what that species would be. How about humans? <clears throat> Globally, many species are declining as the result of a variety of destructive human activities, particularly habitat loss, fragmentation and degradation, the widespread use of pesticides, herbicides, and other chemicals, the effects of invasive species, and these are all aggravated by runaway climate change. This is, what is that called, a, a threat? multiplier is uh, runaway climate change. You, you, know, you take all of this other stuff and you overlay it with climate change or is that underlay it and you have what's called in the military this would be called a threat multiplier. <clears throat> Gauging a species conservation status has traditionally been based on assessments issued by the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, we've all heard of their red list, of the population numbers and extinction risks for more than 150,300 species evaluated by the IUCN. So this is according to the IUCN of the 150,000 species they've evaluated, 28% are now considered to be facing the threat of extinction and approximately 1% have been declared extinct. However, the new study's authors noted that extinctions are preceded by progressive population declines through time that leave demographic footprints warning of impending extinctions and this downward population trajectory is what the researchers analyzed. And according, according to the team's analysis, so it's that 49%, 49 percent, 49 percent of the species populations are stable. I'm having trouble with that, but 48% have shrinking, not 28%, 48% have shrinking populations, while only 3% have populations that are increasing. They also found evidence that 33% of species currently classified by the IUCN as least concerned, meaning not threatened, are actually trending toward extinction. So it all depends on uh, you know your how you measure stuff. <laughs> Additionally. The researchers found that some taxonomic classes of animals are experiencing greater threats to their continued existence than others. For example, the team found that amphibians are experiencing the greatest population drops of any animal classes. <clears throat> Ge geography is also important. Declines are steeper among animals living in the tropics 
compared to temperate region species, probably because tropical species tend to be more sensitive to change. Well, uh, we're going to see some changes. <clears throat> uh, quoting the study, <clears throat> collectively, our findings reinforce the warning that biodiversity is on the brink of an extinction crisis, close quote, the authors point out in their study, noting that this extinction event will be far more serious than prior research has suggested, particularly as entire ecosystems unravel and collapse. Quote, this crisis will have extensive ecological and ecosystemic consequences given that ecological functioning is severely impacted by population declines and the resulting changes in community compositions, close quote. Further, the study authors found that relying solely on the IUCN's red list, quote, runs a risk of downplaying the severity of biodiversity loss, close quote, especially uh, after they found that some 33% of the species classified as not threatened actually have declining populations too. For example, just 30 percent of bird species are now considered, quote, threatened by the IUCN, but this study's authors found that 53 percent, not 13 percent, of birds have declining populations, which is obviously, as they say, the precursor to going extinct. You decline and decline and decline, and then you go extinct. Despite this, the IUCN classifi classifications are still an excellent resource for conservation scientists, although this study's methodology provides additional information regarding impending biodiversity loss. Combining the IUCN data with the findings in this study provides a reasonably precise picture about what is happening and why. The reason for this impending massive biodiversity loss is obvious. It cannot be denied that human activities are the sole cause of this extinction event, which is driven by our, meaning humans, unsustainable use of land, water, and energy, along with driving runaway climate change. Currently, 40% of all land on Earth has been altered specifically for food production to support the growing human population. Agriculture alone is responsible for 90% of global deforestation and 70% of the planet's fresh water consumption, thereby pushing species that inhabit those habitats toward extinction. And closing with a long quote, uh, summing up the study, quote, to make matters worse, unsustainable food production and consumption are significant contributors to greenhouse gas emissions that are causing atmospheric temperatures to rise, wreaking havoc across the globe. 
the climate crisis is causing everything from severe droughts to more frequent and intense storms. Hmm. It also exacerbates the challenges associated with food production that stress species while creating conditions that make their habitats <clears throat> inhospitable. Increased droughts and floods have made it more difficult to maintain crops and produce sufficient food in some regions. The intertwined relationships among the food system, climate change, and biodiversity loss are placing immense pressure on our planet. Close quote. Do you think so that humans are placing immense pressure on our planet? Let us rise that this human uh, is trapped in the tiny house. All right, the creek has finally come up. Good Lord, uh, will the creek jump out of its banks? Good Lord. It is a fine fine day in the collapse of everything here on July 24, 2023 and I am stuck in the tiny house. People are waving at me telling me to come out but I think I'm in a hole up here in the tiny house. <laughs> All right look at that creek. I don't think I have to go uh, irrigate the tomatoes. What do you guys think? Ah, oh, boy. Get out there and uh, enjoy your tomatoes while you still can. My guys.